Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. You know I just love to crochet <laughs> and I have the balls to prove it. Uh -huh. Looking around this room I certainly do. So without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Crochet Rib Balaclava for Adults. We've already filmed the child size version. If you've done the child size version the adult is very very similar other than the stitch counting and the repeating being slightly different because we're making up more space to have a larger circumference. So without further ado I'm gonna take you into the other video of just showing you what it looks like when it's completely open and before you've done the back seam. So here's what it looks like when it's completely open and the back seam is not done. You can see that it is a, like almost like a mask and then you're just going to do the top part first. Then you're going to do the bottom part like in the chin uh, uh, mouth area and then on the other side of that once that gap is uh, completed then you pick up both sides and then you go back around to the back of the balaclava. So this is the back seam of this. This is a child size version just but it's very similar in how it's done. So what you're having uh, doing is that you can see that it looks like it's a wedge on this side. We're going to be doing that for the adult as well. The wedge repeat is slightly different so then that's just something that we have to pay attention to. The length is obviously longer as well. So what's going to happen is that we're gonna do a section and then we're gonna completely wedge out and then once that repeat is done then you start a new repeat and you're coming across the edge and picking up all these ones that you uh, were stopping early on just to create that so it creates a nice uh, rounded off appearance at the top of the balaclava. So what we have to do here is that we have to repeat that a set number of times and then once we get to the face area here you're going to take the top area and you're going to just do the top and the difference between the adults and men's is very slight but we'll talk about it when we get there. So the distance will be much wider than obviously this toddler version and then you're gonna get that done, fasten off and then you'll take the bottom portion and then also crochet that out and once both sides are completely even with each other we're going to then just crochet along both of these to bring them back together and then crochet ourselves around to the front or sorry around to the back and then join it with the seam. So what I'm going to do today is an abbreviated version of what this is. So I made a stitch climatic. So basically it's these wedges that you're going to be doing and then once you do the repeat you're going to notice is that it will follow a line. So then you'll have a nice uh, kind of like a pointed uh, top. Once you have the top done it's again then gathered at the end and then it's rounded off at the top. So that will naturally happen on its own. So what I need to do is that I need to show you how to do one of these uh, wedges and then once you understand how to do that you just keep repeating that for the set the number of instructions and then I will take you through the top front or uh, top of the front and the bottom of the front and then join it once again to show you how to finish. So you'll need a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook in order to play. Just one ball of Red Heart Super Saver is all that's needed. In the pattern it does show a female but we also have a men's version. You'll see that here in a different color code. So if you're working with the women's you want to chain 57. The men's 59 and of course if you want to customize it you can change that as well. So the difference basically is, is only in the top section as you're completing it to the top. That's where you're going to create the wedging effect but how long it is is basically up to you. So let's uh, grab our hook and let's begin to play. So let's create a slip knot and start. I'm gonna just do the female version so I'm gonna chain only 57. You can do the men's 59 if you wish and if you'd like to customize it you can change that as well. So just uh, chain that number. So 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go to 57 or 59 and meet me back here in a moment. So I now have 57 here. Let's do row number one. So it doesn't matter uh, if it's the other uh, size as well. You're still gonna do the same thing. So second chain from the hook. Turn it over and get the back hump of the chain and I want you to single crochet yourself all the way across the chain on the back hump all the way back to the other side. So single crochet in each chain all the way to the other side. I'll be back in a moment. I've come up all the way across my chain. We're gonna turn our work and do row number two which is the start of the repeat. So back to the instructions we go. We're going to go to rows number two and three. They're both different from each other and then it says repeat the last two rows five more times then repeat the second row once. What I like to do on a spare piece of paper is that I write two, three 
and then this will represent number two. This is number three. So then you have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and go all the way and you have to end with the second row. So this will be number 14. Once we get that done, we're then going to proceed to the next row and then what I do for myself is that I check this off as I go and so after I'm gonna show you rows number two and three, I'm gonna have you repeat that uh, sequence until you get to the um, finish off with the second row and then we're gonna pick you up on the next row right here. So let's begin rows number two and three. So let's begin rows number two. This is the top of the hat that I'm working on. I know this because I worked on the child's version and it's the same. So you're gonna chain up one. If you're new to crochet, there's always two strands that make up a stitch. So when you slide the hook underneath, you can see that there's two strands. If you go into the strand that's closest to you, that is the front loop and the one that is away from you, which you have to dive through the middle to get to, that's the back loop. That's where you wanna play. So you wanna slip stitch in the back loop only and then starting in the next one, you're going to single crochet in the back loop all the way to the other side. This is what's creating a portion of that wedging that you need to have. So what I need you to do is go all the way across now, row number two, single crochet in the back loop only and I'll meet you at the other side in a moment. So I'm coming all the way to the end of number two. You go all the way down. This is the neck uh, right at the base of the neck. So you want always this to be a flat side. You're gonna turn your work and let's begin row number three. In row number three, you're going to chain up one and you'll start with a single crochet in the back loop only. So here's the trick. On rows number three, whenever you complete this over and over and over, you're always gonna end two stitches early on the other side. That's what's creating that wedge. So what I'm going to do is that I'll meet you on the other side and just stop when you are at the third row, or sorry, third stitch from the edge and I'll show you that in a moment. So I'm coming close to the end of number three. So I wanna stop on the third last stitch which is right here. So I have one more stitch and then the last one. So this is a single and this is a slip stitch. And so that's where I wanna stop right here. So you're gonna turn your work and begin row number two again and let's just quickly review how you're gonna do that. So now I need you to repeat two and three a total of five times and I showed you my sheet already and then repeat the second row one more time. So to start the second row once again you're gonna chain up one and you're going to slip stitch in the back loop of the first stitch and then the next one starts with the single crochet in the back loop. And so that creates just a smaller stitch so that it will allow you to be able to do that wedging concept and all you just need to do now is just to go all the way across just single crochet on the back loop only. Then on row number three again you just turn your work and when you come all the way back across you are going to stop then the third stitch before the end. So right there and then you'll have another wedge shape. So I need you to do your repeats now and I'll see you at the end of row number two after all the repeats are done. So this wedge will be much bigger and then I'll take you through the next row which then concludes the segment of the actual full repeat itself within the body and I'll be right back in a moment. So I've now completed my repeat that I have and I finished on the second row that you can see and so this is what it's gonna look like. It's, it's a wedge. So the next row that is still part of the same repeat is that we're gonna go across the top and then down through the angle here right to this spot right here. Really quite easy to do. So let's begin the next row and then this is the actual full sequence of one of the major repeats that we'll be doing in this particular project. One other thing that you should know when you did your chain you did a certain number. So you either did 57 or 59. When you did second chain from the hook it gave you a total number of either 56 single crochets for the women's, 58 for the men's. The number of stitches that you'll have that will come across and then back down will be that same number. So it'll either be 56 or 58. So just make sure that you keep that in mind. It, it'll just help you to know that. Let's begin the next row. To start the next row you're just gonna chain up one and in the back loop only I need you to single crochet all the way to the top of where this drops off and I will see you there in a moment but don't stop there. We're gonna still continue on from that point. So just single crochet in the back loop only to that point and I'll catch up there in a moment. So I'm coming up all the way across the top and I'm gonna go right to the last one which includes that slip stitch. Now here's the thing. You're gonna step down each one of these steps. So the first step down is going to be in the back loop only of a single crochet just stepping on down. Just pull it down and then the next one is a single crochet in the next slip stitch. It's a little tricky 
but you can do it. Then you're gonna step down again. So in the back loop only, step down, pull it down, and then single crochet in the next one. And then step on down, back loop only. And that's pulling this wedge together. So you keep stepping down until you can't step anymore. That's as easy as it gets. So I've already done my counting of the repeat when I started so I'm not bothering to count. And so I'm just coming down to the very last one. So I step down and then in the last slip stitch single crochet and then that's where you're gonna stop. So you can see that we just created this wedge and that you have and then now the next part of the wedge this should be the same number that you started with. So either be 56 or 58 depending on how you started your first uh, one that you did. And then what you need to do is you need to repeat rows number two through the complete sequence once again and including this row that I just showed you. So I need you to do all that one more time before you progress into the shaping of the face. So please do that and all you just need to do is just turn your work and start again on row number two. So row number two if you recall is just chain up one single crochet in the back loop only. Sorry, slip stitch in the back loop only and then the next one is a single crochet in the back loop. And you'll do that all the way and then row number three will come back and you'll stop on the third last stitch and then go back in the other direction. So just keep that paper handy that you did uh, to keep your sequence and do the sequence once again and including this row that you just uh, completed all the way to create the wedge. So you'll do that once again and that's where I'll pick you up in the next part of this tutorial. So I'll work on that and I'll be right back in a few seconds. So I'm working through my second time of doing the complete repeat. I just wanna show you what it looks like before I finish the final repeat. So I have to come across and then down and then back to the spot. So you're gonna notice once I do that it's gonna start puckering here because this is the top of the hat. So I just got one more row to do. This is considered the next row and that's part of that sequence right here and then we're gonna start shaping the face after this. So I now completed the entire sequence and I'm here at the top of the hat which is where I need to be. So what we're going to do now is move forward in the shaping of the face. When we get the shaping of the face done, the upper and the lower, you're going to be asked to complete two more of these to bring it back to conclusion. For myself though, I'm going to be taking you to the child size version to show you how to uh, fasten this all off to be able to attach it and do the top of the of the gathering of the stitches. So for now, we're going to move on to the shaping of the face and the opening on the upper level. So we're going to begin shaping of the face and what I need you to pay attention to the most which I realized when I was doing the child size version that I screwed up on. It says that repeat the last two rows a total of four more times and there's a triple asterisk here. So after we get uh, row number two and three, you're going to repeat the last two rows four more times. So in my little instructions that I did, I did another one here and you can see two and three and then I have the four more times. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's the end of that section. But this is not the end of the first time that you need to get through this. So you're gonna do these next two rows and then right at the very top here it states it says repeat the triple asterisk to the triple asterisk one more time. So this means that you need to come back to the second row all the way to the ending of the fourth row and this is where you're going to finish. So the second time that you get through it this is where you need to stop before you start picking it up again. Therefore you're going to fasten off once you get here on the second time through. We're then going to complete the, then the lower sections and then the joining row which is right here is going to finish off these uh, sections that you see it's just written over here instead. So let's just start and we're gonna do the first row and when we do this we're only gonna go partially the way back. So for the women's size it's 26 stitches for and then for the adult or sorry for the men's it's 28. We're still going to we're at the top of the hat so we still need to do that slip stitch in the first one and then one back loop in each of the either in the next 26 or 28. So let's just get started and let's begin row number one of shaping of the face. So let's begin the first row. It's gonna be our setup row to get us partially the way down. It's just gonna be over the eyebrow line of our face. So we're just going to chain one and you'll slip stitch in the first back loop only. And now you're going to count out and you're either gonna do 26 or 28 and so you just do the number. So just in the back loop only single crochet. So there's one, 
two and three and go all the way to that number that you want and I'll be back in a moment. So I've now just gone my stitches that I wanna go down and it's a total of 26 for me. So this is where the eyebrow line is going to be. This line will stay flat just like the base of the neck. So it's only still gonna be on the top where we're gonna create that wedging effect but here it's going to stay flat. So let's do second row and this will be part of the repeat then for the shaping of the upper face. So we're going to do the second row like we did before and all we need to do is just chain up one and do one single crochet in the back loop only and you're going to stop then the third last stitch before you get to the end. Okay, so you're gonna come all the way over here and stop on the third one and that's where I'm gonna pick you up in a moment. So please do this for row number two. So I stopped the third last stitch so the last two are left empty and then you turn your work and let's do row number three. Row number three, you already know what you're doing. So you're chaining up one and you're going to slip stitch in the first back loop only and then start from that point doing one single crochet in the back loops. And so you're going to create this wedging effect every time you're doing this set of repeating again. And what I need you to do is just go back all the way down to the bottom of the eyebrow line and I'll talk to you about what's next from that point. So I'm back here at the eyebrow line. So we're gonna be creating the wedging effect like we did with here but we're just working on the top of the forehead area. So what I've done here off camera is that I've already done, well actually on camera, I did rows number two and three already. So now I need to do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven for this particular part of the repeat. Then we're going to proceed into the next uh, two rows that we have. And then we need to repeat this all over again but not these two. Uh, rows. So let's uh, continue and I need you to start and do row number two again. So this is like two and three. So you'll just do two and three, two and three, two and three, two and three. And then you're just gonna make the wedging happen like you did before. So please do that and I will be back at the end of number 11 here after the four times that is repeated. Now that I completed rows number two and three a total of four more times this is where I am. So the next row we're going to then go across the top and then the next row we're gonna come all the way back and then that's where it's going to pick up and then you'll do that repeat again um, but make sure that you stop at the triple asterisk. So this is what it's gonna look like when you completely do this sequence the second time. This is how it should look and we're gonna complete the bottom and then when we do the joining of the rows we're gonna come across and then that's when we're going to complete that on the next time. So for now let's just do the next two rows and then we gotta repeat our sequence one more time. So this is the next row as it states in the instructions. So we're just going to chain up one and you'll do one single crochet in each one of the stitches all the way to this point here and that's where I'm gonna pick you up and then we'll just complete this wedge going down. So I'm coming across and I'm just single crocheting into each one of the stitches right to the end. Then we're going to then just drop down and so we wanna keep dropping until we get to that flat section right here. Okay, so you're gonna come on down and come into the back loop only of the next drop down so single crochet and then single crochet the next slip stitch. This number that you'll end up with at the end of this section should be the same number that you ended up with when you went down the first time to make the top section here. So let's continue so just dropping down back loop only and then continue to drop So you can see that I'm not keeping count. I'm just looking to where it shows. See this is the flat so I can drop one more time so that I can make this section flat as well. So this is the first row and now we have to turn and do the next row before we start the sequence all over again. So we're at the top of the hat so you're just gonna chain up one and you know the routine by now. So just slip stitch in the first one and then single crochet in the back loop all the way down to the top of the forehead area and then the sequence then will pick up once again for a repeat and I'll see you there in a moment. So now I've completed this whole section and now according to the top of this I need to repeat then triple asterisks to the triple asterisks one more time. So over here it says the second and third row all the way to the triple asterisks. So you have to repeat four times after that. 
that's where you're going to stop. That's where you're going to fasten off then and this is where this top section will end and we'll pick up and we'll start doing the bottom section that will fill this all in down here. So it's a really neat idea. So I need you now to repeat this section once again. Just omit this final rows. We'll be completing that as we do the join row later on. So let's uh, do that and I'll be back in a moment with that done. So I've now just repeated the sequence and I want to stop here. So I'm still gonna leave this wedging in. We'll fix that later when we do the base here of the bottom. So just leave a long enough strand that you can use to sew that in with a tapestry needle and we're going to fasten this off. We're looking at the right side of the project right now. The reason why I can tell that is that I crochet in this direction and when we go to start the bottom we need to make sure that we start with the very next stitch that's available to you right here and so if I crochet this direction then this means that this is the wrong side and that's how I know for myself. So we're gonna start with the bottom lower section and let's look at the instructions for that. Now the bottom lower section is actually really quite easy. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start off in the very next stitch that's available to us and we're gonna do a two together right off the bat and then we're going to then come across and then we're going to do a two together here um, at the end of the row and then we're gonna do this like the first one. So we'll do a two together. The reason why we're doing that if you look at the model itself you'll notice that the shape here is like a half moon opening. So what we're gonna do is that we're just uh, uh, doing two together to open this up a little bit more and then it's just a straight shot of a repeat of back and forth here on the back loops only and then on the other side when it comes around to her face we're then going to start increasing stitches to bring that back together to where it needs to go and then we're gonna take the upper piece and the lower piece and with one uh, pass across we're gonna join them together to complete the remaining of this ba uh, balacla uh, balaclava. Sorry I have a hard time saying that. Let's begin the lower section. So starting in the next stitch that's available to you. So this here is the top piece. So just lean it forward so you can see it and go into the back loop only and attach it and then chain one. You're going to put this back loop and the next one together as one stitch. So just going in, pull through, go right up over top of the straggler to catch it in and then go to the next back loop, pull through. You see three loops on the hook, pull through all three. That's a two together. And then the remaining of this all the way across is just a back loop single crochet all the way down to the neck and then I'll see you at, at that moment in just a few seconds from now. So I'll be right back. Coming all the way to the neckline, this is row number one and you're just going flat on so you're not doing anything special with that. Turn your work and let's begin row number two. So in row number two you're just gonna chain up one and you'll just apply one single crochet in the back loop only but the last two stitches you wanna put those together as a single crochet two together in the back loops and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So just get there and I'll be right back. So I'm coming all the way across and in the very last uh, two stitches I wanna make sure that I put those two together. So just put the two and then turn your work and let's begin row number three which is the same as the first row and let's do that next. In row number three you're just gonna chain up one and put the first two together still in the back loops and then just go all the way down to the neckline then with your back loop single crochet. I'll be right back. Row number four is just gonna be a straight pass across so there's no extra special work involved so just chain up one, one single crochet in the back loop only and go all the way to the very end of the row so you're not gonna do any decreasing at all and I will talk about the repeat once we get to that moment. So coming all the way straight across and you're gonna come into the last one and then you're going to turn your work. So let's talk about the repeat that we have because the adult uh, women's and men's are a different size. Let's, let's discuss. Got my special sheet again. So for the women's size you're going to repeat the last row which is number four a total of ten times. For the men's you are going to repeat it a total of twelve times. It's just a matter of going straight back and forth and then that's where I'm gonna pick you up next and then after that I'm going to show you how we're gonna bring this back into conclusion and then we'll do our joining row after that. So please do the number four, the repeat either ten or twelve times and I'll be right back. So I've now done my repeating that I need to do. I'm not quite done though with the bottom section. We got two more rows left. So you should be at the bottom neckline at this point. 
Okay, so make sure that you are there and what we're going to do is that we're gonna start up and the very last stitch will have two single crochets into the same back loop in order to have this kind of expand back out like it was before. So let's do that. So this is the next row and let's begin that. So to start the next row just chain up one and do one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way to the end and on the very last one we'll put two single crochets in the back loop just to have the expansion. I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming close to the last one and in the last one you'll put two single crochets in the back loop. So and that'll help it expand. So let's turn to work and do the next row and this is the last row before the join. To do this one you're just gonna chain one and in the very first one in the back loop only you'll apply two single crochets into the same stitch. So there's another increase and then one single crochet in the back loop of all the remaining all the way back to down to the neck. So please do that and meet me back here in a moment. We're now going to do the joining row. So we're going to join this row to this one so it'll bring it like this and it will have a pucker which is what you're needing because it is going to be round after all. And so what we have to do is that we have to start and we're gonna go in the back loop only and then in the last stitch here we're still going to put in two single crochets into the same last one and then we're going to immediately jump then to this section here and we're going to follow it all the way back to the top and then that will bring this whole section to a conclusion. Let's begin the joining row. Let's begin your joining row. So you're just gonna chain up one and apply one single crochet in the back loop of each one except for the very last one here on the bottom section you're going to apply two and that's where I'm going to meet you there in a moment. So I'm coming across the bottom section here and I wanna make sure the very last stitch gets two single crochets into it so I can have that expansion. So it's the next one. So it'll be two into this one. And then you're going to immediately grab the top section here and still stay within the back loop only. And go right into that first stitch that you have available to you. Make sure that you do pull everything nice and tight here at the join. And then you're just going to continue to go across. And I will meet you at the end where it starts dipping down just to quickly review that with you again. So this is joining both of the sections at the same time. And I'll be back in a moment. So I'm close to where those divots are for the wedging. So I'm gonna come right to the very last one and then you drop down like you already know. So in the back loop of the next drop do a single crochet in the back loop and then single crochet in the next uh, slip stitch in the back loop and you keep going down until you can see the top is flat once again. So the different size of the men's and the women's may have a different um, height but I wouldn't care about that I, and I'm not even sure that's even true <laughs> now that I say that. But um, what we have here is that we're just filling in those spaces. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes you gotta fake it or make it. There are some people here on YouTube that hold me really technical for everything I say. Which I understand but sometimes it's hard to cover all the bases too. So I'm coming all the way down and so it should be a flat top and now that it is. So I know that I cannot go any further. So now at this point when I zoom you out the upper and the lower has now been joined together and you can see that the puckering is happening because this technically is a circle just because of the way that we're doing the top here. So I'm going to just quickly review on how to finish this and then we're gonna take you to the child version in order to have you uh, sew the back seam and then also gather the top to have a conclusion. So right now we just finished joining of the rows. We need to repeat now the double asterisks to the double asterisks and what that is is it's double asterisks here on page number one that you see and it's gonna go all the way to the double asterisks to where you had this. So that's those two beginning sections that we had. So when I zoom you back out here those are the two that you have right here one and two. So you're going to complete that starting at this particular point. So you'll start two and three. Do your number of repeats that you have. You'll do the next row to finish it off nicely and then do it one more time and then you'll end up with the kid size that will look like this. And eventually what's gonna happen is that it will open up like a mask and you're just going to take your strand and you're going to sew that together to form the circle and then you're going to take the yarn and then just gather the top. So I'm going to now ask you to do um, the two repeats of the double asterisks to the double asterisks. Do it twice and then you can start then seaming up the back. So please do that and we're gonna proceed on how to close this off 
and gather the top next. And I guess this is where I'm gonna leave you on this particular sample. So I will leave that in your capable hands and have yourself a great day. And we'll continue the tutorial in just a second. So I'm now at the end of this. I did my two sections. You can see that it looks pretty even and that's what our goal was. So we wanna fasten this yarn long enough so that we can sew the edges together. So don't make it too long but don't be too short either. And we are going to seal the top then as the second step. But we know what the right side of the project is because the fact that we have this. So we're just gonna roll it and keep that out and facing out like this. And then we're going to put this onto a tapestry needle and then just put it together. So let's do that. So this is a two step process. So I want you to put that long strand on a tapestry needle. I then want you just to wrap it so that you capture the edges together. And this is called a whip stitch. You're gonna come in one side and back over and just attach it. So if you do it right, it'll actually look pretty even. So I'm gonna go into this stitch here and then grab the next stitch on the other side. And so you're just gonna work all the way down the seam line doing the same thing. And so you're putting this together. So if you pull it nice and tight once in a while, it'll help really hide that in and just work your way all the way down the seam line to bring it together. And then this is be step number one and then I'll be back in a moment. As you're coming down the edge, the number of stitches should be aligned with each other. If something is going wrong, it doesn't hurt to be able to skip a certain amount of stitches to bring it back in alignment. So skipping at least just one stitch at a time if you need to do multiple. So I just had to skip one stitch and then I'm back to being aligned again. It's important that you know how to do stuff like that because nothing in life is ever perfect. So just keeping going down the edge. I am going to show you how to weave in the ends. And so any ends that you will have, I want you to do the same way and I'll just demonstrate it one time. So once you come to the very last one, just join it. Now turn it to the inside of the hat. Now you can tell because this is the outside, right? Because that's the right side of the work. So I want you just to fasten it just right on the edge. Just enough so that you can form this into a loop to kind of tie onto itself. And when you pull it, don't change the shape of the hat. Then staying on the inside of the hat, just weaving it into, into some fibers. So don't let that needle peek out the other side. And just pull it through. And when you pull it taut, don't change the shape. That's so important for you to know that. So then you'll go back to where you came and then back down one more time. So in and out a total of three times on the fibers on the inside. And once you have that done, you can safely cut that down. Now you can remove out your right side stitch marker, but we're not done because we have a hole in the top. So we need to secure that into position first. And that's what we need to pull that together. So what I like to do is just put my strand on a tapestry needle. The other side, I would like to have a slip knot. And so when I put it in, I wanna just go through and then put it through the slip knot and that will lock onto itself. And I want you to throw this strand to the inside of the hat. We'll deal with that later. Now, you just want to evenly go around the stitch work, but don't pull it all the way shut until you're all the way around. Then it will evenly close. So this is called gathering the top. Once you're all the way around the top, then you're gonna pull shut and this will close it in. And then I go directly across like that. And then what I like to do is directly cross it in the other direction. So go there and then from the other direction I go this way. And that will close that off. Then I'm gonna stick the needle through this and using my hand behind, I'm gonna come out through the middle on the interior and I'll just put this inside out. Pull it snug and then on the inside, any loose ends that I will have, I will secure in with the tapestry needle back and forth a total of three times. So I tie it in a knot first to secure it 
and then just stay within the fibers on the inside of the hat back and forth a total of three times. So this would be how you would make this hat. It's really not that complicated, just several steps. It's not like a hat that you go round and round and round. It's more um, intricate than that and any loose ends you'll wanna do that with which I have to go back and fix. So anyway, that's what it looks like and it's really neat and I think it's a great idea and it will keep your child warm and this is the toddler size version of your ski mask or your balaclava. <laughs> I have a hard time saying that. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.